<clears throat> so I was in the dressing room and a roadie kept giving me these tall Budweiser's and by the time Charlie Daniels came off the stage I mean I was you know slurring words and un unsteady on my feet and we sat down in the dressing room and everything was fine and I asked a, a roadie I said I don't really know what to ask him he said ask him about hammer I think that's the way it went I said okay what does it mean he said well, he'll tell you so uh, we got in the dressing room and I said we're backstage at the Carolyn's Filet and him with one of the greatest southern rockers of them all, Mr. Charlie Daniels. Charlie, does the word hammer mean anything to you? And he said, yes, it does, and I want to know how you know. That was top secret, and it was very important to me. I want you to point out to me who told you that. And, of course, I, I didn't, but it was just downhill from there. It was... Uh, he was in a bad mood because I think it was going to be the title of their next album and I think it was going to be a surprise for someone and somehow it had gotten out and I said what was it like playing for Jimmy Carter's inauguration and he said oh it was good he said Washington Post said we looked like a bunch of mangy horse wrestlers he said that's the best compliment that bunch of narrow he said they wouldn't know a mangy horse rustler from a 55 gallon oil drum. And he was just in a very bad mood. And uh, he said something like, you know you are required by law to get drunk in the state of North Carolina because of that sealed bottle. He said, uh, I'd like to sit down with the governor. I'd like to sit down with the president of the Baptist State Convention. I'd give him a I'd give them a center's point of view. They think they're going to tell me what to do to hell they are. Ain't nobody tells me what to do. Now, I couldn't even use the interview. And plus, the electrical system at Carowinds was making us run fast. So it was speeded up. And it was just very... I just... I was very, very unprofessional. Very amateurish. And, you know, I was working... And I should have maintained professionalism and stayed sober. And then, so that was always a very embarrassing uh, page in my musical radio broadcasting career. One amazing thing that happened was in February of 1985, I was on the radio at WCSL in Cherryville, and it was Johnny Cash's birthday, 53rd. And I said, I'm going to call the House of Cash in Hendersonville, Tennessee. And I'm going to see if they'll have John return my call for an interview, if he's in town. So I, was, uh, I called three or four times and no answer. And I was playing his record, The Baron. And I called and I heard, yes. John? Yes. Happy birthday. Well, thank you very much. Who is this? And I said, Bob Bigger, WGNC, uh, WCSL Radio in Cherryville, North Carolina. Could we do an interview? Were you sure? I said, anything you want to talk about? Any HBO specials? Any records? Any books? Movies? TV shows? Anything? He said, no, Bob. He said, you call me. You shoot. So, he gave me the nicest interview. He didn't rush me.